Hey guys, Vincent back with another video for Tails Coffee. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys about a very important part of the brewing process that actually led me to create and develop my single pour technique. And that part is extraction. I think understanding the extraction process is very important because once you understand the theory behind it, you can apply it to any brewing process or method or technique and still get a great cup of coffee. So before we get into the video, if you guys love weekly coffee content, make sure to subscribe to us and all the equipment and gear that we'll be using on this video will be available on our website, tailscoffee.com, link in the description below. And let's get right into how I would do extraction and I'm gonna show you guys. So what exactly is extraction? Extraction is actually the process of removing or stripping the flavors from the coffee beans with water and that's how we get ourselves a cup of coffee. Now, for me, I think there are like three main variables that actually affect how extraction works. The first one being time, the second one being temperature, and the third one is the type of water. Now the type of water is just a little bit more complicated and I didn't really want to go into it. So we're only gonna be talking about the two parts and that's why today's focus is gonna be on the time section and then next week we'll be talking about the temperature part. There's a little few other variables that come with the temperature but next week's will be on those smaller variables and then today's is just mostly gonna be talking about how time affects extraction. So understanding extraction is really important because a good cup of coffee is actually not the average greatness of a, from the first drip to the last drip. We want a good cup of coffee to be great from the first drip to the last drip. And only by understanding at what times and at what temperatures the good flavors are being extracted can we actually produce a great cup of coffee. Now for the time factor, I actually bought a new stand right over here just to be able to show you guys exactly how this would work on a time side. We're going to be brewing two different cups of coffees. There will be two different experiments, one with a single pour and one with a blue. The single pour will naturally be the faster one and then the bloom will be a, a slightly longer one. What we're gonna do is every 15 seconds, we're going to switch a cup. And we're gonna take a look at the differences of each section of the coffee. The color, the flavors, maybe how murky or how clear they are. And we're gonna talk about that and compare between the time spans of a shorter brew and a longer brew. And by doing this, we can understand where the good flavors start and where the good flavors end. Quick rundown, we're gonna be keeping everything the same. I'm gonna be using the coffee Honey Swirl. It's our Colombian coffee that we recently roasted. It's also available on our website. It's got a nice sweetness to it. It doesn't have too many gases. It's pretty easy to control. And we're gonna be using a 90 degree water, 20 grams of beans, and 300 grams of water. I'm gonna fill the kettle to exactly 300 grams so we don't need to have a scale underwards. And we're just gonna be brewing with both the single pour and the bloom. And let's get right into the experiments. So I've got my timer, I've got my chopstick, I've preset the, the, the grinds. And we're gonna do the single pour first. So let's start. And after this, we're gonna talk about the color the f and we're gonna do some taste testing so we can see the, the color, the flavors, and the amount of liquid that's in each one, okay? And... Start. Notice how we're just slowly aiming to push all the grinds out towards the side. With the flush, pouring down the sides. If you guys wanna take a quick look, you can already notice that the colors are getting lighter as it's dripping. So that's done. We've got ourselves a, a coffee and it finished at about minute 37. And yeah, let's just take a quick shot. We're gonna stop here and we're gonna take a, 
a shot of all the, the samples we've got and let's just talk through everything. So we're back on this side of the counter with all the samples. Here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven samples. And clearly this is like, the first part, um, very little has dripped out. I always, when I brew slowly, I have a very late first drip. So our first drip here probably started at like 14, 13, 14 seconds. Um, and then we've got ourselves probably the darkest of sections. And you can see that it's not super full. It's almost there. That's because we haven't filled all the way up yet. And then here we have the third one, which is, a little bit lighter, but darker than this still. And if you guys want to take a quicker, closer look. I'm not sure if you guys know, can see, but after the fourth one, which is a little bit lighter than the third one, we have ourselves the fifth one. And here we have the fourth one. And here's the fifth one. Now, they almost look the same. Let me just see. Aside from their volume, but I don't know if the camera can show it or not, but this, the fourth one is actually a little bit murkier, which means there's a little bit more oils in this one than in the fifth one. And after that, we've just got like five, six, seven, pretty much are the same color. Uh, I expect them to almost taste the same. But yeah, let's actually get into the tasting. I'm very excited. I'd love to taste it with everybody. So if you guys can run this experiment at the same time, that'd be cool too, right? Um, here's the first one. We have barely anything in here. Let's just do a quick taste test. Super acidic. Um, very little quantity. The acidity is there. Um, just a little background. Caffeine is extremely soluble and a lot of flavors are actually attached to caffeine. So if you guys wonder why decaf loses a lot of flavors, and that is because when removing the caffeine from the beans, you're actually removing a lot of flavors as well. Uh, so that's why decaffeinated coffees tend to be a little bit thinner, quite a bit thinner and quite a bit, like less, less tasty, I guess. There's just less, less complexity in my opinion. Um, that's because a lot of flavors are actually extracted with the caffeine. So if you could imagine, the first two is gonna have the most caffeine. That's why the color is a little bit darker. And let's just taste test the second part now. We have a lot of sweetness. Still a little bit strong on the acidity. Um, nice richness to it, but no bitters. And uh, we have the third one here now. It's still very round very sweet. Um, we're getting into like a black tea kind of territory in terms of texture. The roundness is still from the, from the, the amount of oils that are given out. And I, I think it's quite nice still. Now's when it starts to get really light colored and these four are actually almost the same color. Um, so we're going to start tasting it. This is between the 45 seconds and the one minute mark. It's still pretty decent. Um, not a lot of flavors left, to be honest. It's quite watery. There's a little hint of dryness coming out, but for the most part, I would like to say it's still a honey flavor. And then we have last three. So this is at the one minute to 115 mark. There's very little texture to it. And then on the side of the tongues, I'm starting to feel quite dry. Um, it's not even, there's no, there's no like chocolate or anything. It's just like a, like a really watered down tea that's drying my mouth up. And it makes me wonder if we should even have this in the, in the coffee. Um, and here's the last part, last two parts. Yeah, there's, not a lot of flavors left. There's almost like a little bit of a shaft flavor. I've already tried to remove most of the shaft from this coffee. So I'm surprised there's a little bit of that, but it's getting really dry now and pretty much there's nothing here. Yeah, it, there's, it's the same. It doesn't taste like much. So we have, from just this test alone, I can tell you that 
the first four, maybe up to the fifth parts, if we put it together, it would be a really good cup of coffee. I think time-wise, most of the flavors have already extracted, as you can see from the colors alone, by the fourth cup. So we could keep in mind that maybe brewing even shorter than the one minute and 30 is a better option. But let's get right into the second experiment. And in the second experiment, we're gonna be doing a bloom. And the reason is it's because maybe certain flavors are gonna be extracted at different times. And if we hold the flavors at the top for a little bit longer, maybe we might be able to extend the fourth cup into the fifth cup or sixth cup. So let's, let's see how that goes. And let's just do a quick discussion afterwards. So we're back with the second part of the experiment. Uh, we've already got the, the grinds all set up, got my hot water. So we're gonna start with a bloom. I'm just gonna cover it up, give it a quick stir, and then we're just gonna finish the pours. And then we're gonna look at all the samples we've collected afterwards and talk about it. There's a quick stir. I still like to stir just because it helps me allow, allows me to evenly extract everything right away. Now that it's starting to dry up, we're going to pour the rest of the water in. Pour a little bit differently, I'll pour a little bit faster just because I know for when blooms happen, um, the coffee grinds sink quite a bit faster. So we just wanna speed that up midway and have it all flush out as quickly as possible. As you guys might be able to tell, it's already starting to get a lighter color. I'm already gonna assume that we've already hit the 130, so the flavor profiles have already started to drop off. It's probably gonna become pretty flat and just tea-like. And we'll see when we get towards the tasting. So we've hit, finished at about 228. We've got all our samples here. Now let's go and taste it and talk about each part. So we're back with the 10 shot glasses that we have. The total time was about two minutes and 30 seconds. Let's just go over the volume. As you can clearly see, this is where the bloom happened. We've got much less in the first, in the first four as compared to the last time. Um, notice that the third one is when we were waiting and then we started adding water and that's when the fourth one started to refill back up. We hit the fifth one and then Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, you can see that the colors are quite similar. Just like last time, they're very similar in color. Uh, I also expect them to taste very similarly. Not a lot of flavor. Here you can see that the first four are definitely the darkest. This one is just like last time, it's a little bit murkier than the fifth one. So in the first set, it was mostly the biggest difference between our second and our third one. And then the third one and the fourth one had um, a slight variable in terms of, like they were similar, but they, they weren't like super different in terms of their colors. It was just the third one was a little bit rounder. So here we have, again, the flavors. We're gonna do a taste test. Um, so this one reminds me of the third one from last time. And this is probably the fourth and the fifth that probably don't have much flavor left. And so yeah, let's just quickly go over the flavors. Just like last time, it's, it's got that acidity to it. Uh, it's not quite as strong just because uh, maybe I poured a little bit slower. And yeah, we're gonna get into the stronger flavors first. Ooh, boy is that acidic. Holy, really rich, really acidic. It's probably where most of the caffeine was. Similar flavors. Um, it's got a little bit more harshness on the acidity, actually. Then we're moving into the fourth cup. And it's already starting to lose a bit in the texture. It's got a bit of the, it's got quite a bit of the acidity still as well. 
And here we have the fifth one. Uh, this is where the roundness has really just started to really fall off. It's still round, but the flavors have definitely become a lot more tea-like. We're not getting so much sweetness. It is starting to get a little bit more of the bitterness, uh, a little bit of the flatness. Um, I'm expecting the rest of this to, to start getting quite dry. And yeah, it's probably, it's lost all its flavor already. So. All right. So we know that this part is gonna taste a little bit flat. We're just not gonna even bother with it. Just like last time, the coffee towards the end has really fallen off. Really the best flavors, I would like to say once again, are up to about the first minute, maybe a minute 15. So it might be between time and volume that actually determine when the good flavors are being extracted. I would like to say most of the flavors though do extract within the first minute. And that's actually pretty similar to the results in the first, in the first test. So whether we're doing a bloom or a single pour, all the flavors really come out quite towards the beginning. I think what happens is because there's a bloom, there's a lack of water to kind of flush out all the richer flavors that were supposed to be in the third and the fourth cups. And so it was delayed into the fourth and the fifth cups. So with my single pour technique, you're actually getting all the flavors that are good in my opinion out within the first minute and a bloom kind of delays that to a minute 15. If I were to say, I, I don't actually taste much of a difference. Um, I think the only other test I could test is if I were to brew just up to 115 on, what, one minute, 115 on the single pour and then 130 with a bloom and see if they taste the same. They probably do. So I'm not gonna run a huge test on that. I might do it on, the, on a side end or a back end uh, behind the scenes, but, and then I'll let you guys know. But I expect most of the flavors to just be within the first minute, minute and a half. And that's why I've always kept my coffees quite short uh, as opposed to using a bloom. So after running the two experiments, I hope you guys learned how time actually affects the flavors of the coffees. As you can see, the stronger colors, the richer flavors are actually within the first minute to minute and 30. So I would like to kind of just maybe impose an idea that maybe the best coffees are brewed within a minute and 30. I noticed that in the experiment, no matter how I brewed it, whether it was a single pour or with a bloom, that after the minute and 30, the flavors were just falling off and it was turning flatter and drier. I'd like you guys to run the test if you possibly could yourself and see if you guys get the same results. If you do or if you don't, leave a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to just be able to hear back your feedbacks and see what you guys tested versus what I've tested and maybe we're on track to discovering a new brew technique that I will show you guys once we talk about the temperature and some of the other smaller variables. If you guys like this content, make sure to like our videos and I'll see you guys in the next one.